Hi, welcome to episode 7 of Sewing Bee Unraveled with me, Jane, from Haberdasher Do. This week it was sleepwear and lingerie, and the contestants had to make a bra and pants set in the pattern challenge, um, transform some thermal underwear into a going out outfit in the transformation challenge, and then for the pattern challenge they had to make a luxury pair of pyjamas for a man. So they had some quite tricky fabrics to work with this week, and not a lot of time to do it in. So the bra and pants, I haven't got any uh, patterns for bra and pants and it's not something I've made so I can't really talk from first hand experience. Uh, one day when I've got more time on my hands I will uh, have a go. Um, so they had to make a bra which was a three piece, three piece cup, um, underwired and it was on a, fitted onto a yoke and then straps and a bra fitting at the back. Uh, quite a few of them struggled with getting the cups to sit nicely onto the yoke um, and also the getting the elastic stretched enough but not too much and also quite a few of them put the straps on the outside instead of on the inside. Um, for the briefs, um, oh there was um, strange fabrics as well so we're using stretch lace and satins and power mesh which gives structure to the bra. Um, yeah so it was um, a mixed mixed effort. Jill and Chris struggled um, and Annie and Manny did really really well. So that kind of split the pack to start with. Um, fabric wise we do have a stretch lace in stock uh, which is a black stretch lace. It's by the meter. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, we've also got some wide, sort of this wide stretch lace in different colours uh, which you can buy by the meter. Whether there be enough to um, make the cups, probably depends how big your cups are really, doesn't it? Well, at least I haven't said the word gusset yet. Uh, right, I'm going to pop that down there before I trip over it. Um, we also have bra strap elastic, uh, like so, and that's in white. And we also have it in a gold and silver variation. That is the silver, that's the gold. Probably doesn't show up that well. And uh, that's by the metre. Um, and also a clear elastic, um, which does have a special name and I can't remember what it's called. This is like swimwear elastic. Um, you can pop it in um, if uh, the legs or the bra strap of your uh, bikini is beginning to go. Uh, bra extenders. These aren't the actual bra things, but I think you could probably adapt one of these to work on the back of a bra. And the final thing is Pico elastic which is knicker elastic. So Pico it has a nice little uh, frilly edge around it. Okay, uh, thermals to going out outfit, really. Um, I'm not going to wear anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> Maybe I did in the 80s, but uh, I actually used to buy um, long johns and granddad shirts, those thermal granddad shirts. Yeah, so maybe I did. I used to dye them, tie-dye them, make them all different colours. Talking of tie-dye, this is the tie-dye top that was on our mannequin uh, during the week. So I've decided to put it on for this. Um, so who did well in that challenge? Uh, Christian did quite well. He made a, a, like a dress with daisy embellishments on it. Um, Deborah uh, did a, a yellow sweatshirt with grey trimmings. There was bows and trimmings all down the sleeves. Um, and Annie's twisted halter neck top, which she um, twisted chain through it as well to, for, for um, a really good effect. Um, so those D three did quite well. So Christian needs to do quite well. Unfortunately, Jill came bottom again, so she came bottom in two. So she's sitting at the bottom of the pack at the moment. So going into the pattern challenge, no? the made to measure, which was to make a pair of luxury pyjamas uh, for a gentleman. So a lot of the contestants chose uh, a silk or a satin fabric, which is really slippery and really difficult to sew. Um, but that's what they chose. Brogan chose a cotton lawn, which is a lovely silky cotton. So it's a much more stable fabric to sew. So having said that, we're going to go through them. I'm doing this for memory because I've left all my notes at home, I'm afraid. So I'm winging it a bit. I always wing it every week, but I'm winging it even more this week. So uh, 
slippery fabrics this came up last week a little walking foot so you can use a walking foot to help you um, keep control of your fabrics on your machine they're 26 pounds they just clip onto most machines pattern wise not many in the men's section uh, this is a new pattern out as in fact about a year ago McCall's withdrew a load of men's pajama patterns I don't know why but um, they did anyway they bought out a new one this one 8262 I'm pretty sure this is like the one that Christian made um, just you can just tell by the shape of the collar and where the piping is um, they were all fairly similar so it was quite difficult to tell the difference the only one that looked very different was Jill's with the mandarin neckline uh, so this is the only gentleman's pattern that we have it's 8262 by McCall's um, it's got trousers um, either with pockets or without or shorts and then the top you can make with four pockets or two pockets log or short sleeves uh, so there's that one let me put it down somewhere um, there were a few ladies pajamas pat pajama patterns um, some quite nice luxury-ish looking ones. So uh, McCall's 7875. You've got a long pyjama. You've got a, um, like a dressing gown on there as well. And that's a wrap-over pyjama top. And McCall's 8056. Fairly similar to the previous one. And then it's got the um, dressing gown with it as well. And then this is a new one just out from Calls 8261, which is a one piece, um, either a, a full length or a shorty length. Uh, and then you've got a, a, a loose dressing gown, sort of house coat as well on the pattern. So that is number 8261. Okay, fabric wise, we don't stock silk, <laughs> I'm afraid. Um, we do have a couple of satins in stock, um, well four to be precise. Um, we've got this this weight satin in red, royal blue or purple. Uh, it's quite a nice weight. It's probably about the same weight that Deborah did hers. Hers was quite um, a heavy weight satin, I would say. So we have that one and that's only 450 a meter and it's nice and wide. Um, we also have this one, which is a black, satin it's slightly lighter weight um, it's on the bolt that one um, so that would make a nice pair of pajamas these are all polyester by the way so they're not silk satin I'm afraid we also have a couple of lighter weight polyester um, sort of they're like a dull satin um, like a mat almost like a matte satin these are beautiful they drape beautifully We've got it in silver grey or uh, the turquoisey teal. They are not easy to sew because they do slip all over the place. And I know because I made my daughter a dress out of the teal. Um, in fact, I still haven't quite finished it because her prom got cancelled. So I never actually had to finish it. So it's never been worn. Bless her. The other option um, is to go the brogan route and make it out of cotton lawn cotton lawn it's a lovely silk has a lovely silky feel it's a very fine weight cotton we have a few in stock I've just picked out a few so pajama wise we could go peacock feathers or we've got I think they're cactuses or cacti or gourds I'm not quite sure I think it's that way up um, we've got that in two colorways that's quite a funky colorway we can go the traditional paisley route. Very no old coward. No old coward. God, I can't speak today. Um, this too is a cotton lawn. Um, sort of a paisley-ish, sort of liberty-esque, William Morris-esque Morris type of um, print on that one. Um, your traditional tartan cotton lawn. That sort of lilacs and pale greens. Um, these are getting a bit more feminine now. Um, this is um, a lovely cotton lawn. Oh no, this is a viscous. This is a viscous. There's not a lot of this left now. Um, I've had a couple of customers make uh, sleepwear out of this one. It's very lightweight. It's got a big bold pattern on it. Uh, nice for a lightweight summer dressing gown or something like that. 
Okay. Um, this again is a viscous. This is a new one in. Uh, that would make a lovely pajama. The thing about viscous, it's lovely and flowy. Uh, it can be quite cool as well. Right, I've got one more cotton lawn, and then I've got some more gentlemen new fabrics to show you. <laughs> so it's quite difficult finding fabrics for blokes. Um, everything is geared towards women who sew and sort of feminine fabrics. So we do struggle, but when we when we find one, I think we do well. And we love this one. It's it's new in. Um, it's nine pounds a meter. It's a cotton poplin, but it is actually quite a fine weight cotton poplin. It's a very dark navy background and it has motorbikes on it. Okay, so that's that one. That's nine pounds a meter. That would make a lovely crisp uh, pajama top and bottoms or shorts. Uh, it would even make a nice shirt or bow tie or even just handkerchiefs. I'm thinking Father's Day coming up. Okay, uh, this is this is a bit louder, a bit louder and loud and proud. Um, musical notes. Uh, this is a linen mix. I think I might have showed you this last week as well. It's, um, swordfish, um, which is an ex Ralph Lauren fabric. Um, this one's a bit of fun. It is. And get it the right way up. That's a navy with uh, green crocodiles. I think I might have showed you that week, that last week as well. I'm getting a bit repetitive. Uh, so that would be a nice outfit. Um, any scientists in your life? You could go sciencey. That's space rockets, biology, physics, chemistry, all sorts in that one. Or we could go down the more traditional route and we've got, uh, this is um, brushed cotton, a, a classic tartan brushed cotton. This is the cotton stripe. That's going to look really bleh on the screen, I suspect. Um, that's a lovely soft cotton. And then lastly, not so masculine, but it's a very soft pale grey with birds all over and it's got a slightly brushed feel to it so it does feel nice and soft so that will be great for pajamas okay so they they all though all those who had a silky fabric struggled to a certain extent um, in getting the fabric to lie flat um, I think Christian he made his sleeves way too long and then he his facing on his top uh, was a bit too short so it pulled up the whole top up um, and he had similar problems with her um, silk. Uh, Broken's cotton lawn, it was sewn really beautifully and it looked lovely and crisp but they said it looked more like uh, beach wear than pyjamas. Um, Deborah's was a heavy satin so probably a bit easier to sew and hers looked very nice and neat and she'd done some beautiful pattern matching um, on the pocket and down the front and on the collar so she'd really thought about that. Um, Manny's with the plain blue with the contrast um, maroon coloured cuffs and cuffs around the ankles as well and then white piping, just very classic and they looked like they were really well sewn. And then Jill's lastly, she had, they were the mandarin neck, I really liked her fabric, it was a fish fabric in turquoise which she piped in orange which looked fantastic. Um, but she struggled, it didn't fit her model very well, it was a bit too snug on the shoulders that needed to drop down the shoulders a bit. Um, and her finishing wasn't so good. Um, she didn't have time to finish the sleeves. I think she only French seamed one of the sleeves, but not the other. That was it. That reminds me. Um, uh, most people did French seams. So when you're dealing with a, a fine fabric like that, you don't. And if you're making luxury, you don't want to have a raw edge inside, even if it is overlocked. Um, it's just looks so much nicer to have a French seam. So a French seam is when you do the wrong sides together to start with. You stitch that and then you turn it right sides together and stitch over and you have to enclose all of the um, the first seam inside the second seam, if you see what I mean. Um, and I think Christian struggled with that. He had, because he had lots of, there were lots of threads sticking out 
just needed a bit of a trim down but it's quite difficult to do that um so uh, it was a shame to see jill go home i think she'd done really really well but i think last week she was just about hanging on and she um i think she had one good round last week but then this this week just became too much but it was um uh, quite an emotional departure because she talked about her prosthetic limb and how she'd never really um been out in public without her prosthetic limb on before and this is the first time she had to sew without using it so uh, hats off to her i mean we all struggle with two hands so <laughs> how she managed it with with one hand um i don't know so well done jill sorry to see you go and i'll see you all next week bye